Hello watch enthusiasts! As we draw closer to summer, a need does arise for watches which humour the warmer weather, the likelihood of exposure to water, and the general feeling of fun which surrounds this time of year, while still offering versatile elegance and functionality. Therefore, today I would like to discuss five watches which provide excellent quality and design at each price range, while still offering the opportunity to not worry about exposure to the elements, and guaranteeing a certain degree of practicality. Crucially, these watches also enjoy a fantastic and distinctive level of style, and options for bright colours to match the azure of the Mediterranean, the crimson of a Campari soda, or perhaps even the silver of metallic paint under the sun. But before I begin the video, I would of course like to encourage you to like, share and subscribe if you enjoy this content, and find the inf information within it useful. Also, for more watch-related content unavailable on the channel itself, such as events or watches I might happen to see during my daily life, do follow me on Instagram at the address which is now on the screen. The first watch I'd like to speak about, unsurprisingly, is a dive watch, for a reasonably affordable price which offers a mechanical movement, very good build quality, and a design which, whilst great looking in summer, will suit the whole year. And this is of course the Seiko Mini Turtle, an evolution of the Seiko Automatic dive watches, and a piece which really brings Seiko towards the modern day. Despite this mini naming of the watch, its case measures a comfortable 42.3mm across, yet due to a cushion shape and a short lug-to-lug -lug length of 43mm, it really is a case to fit any wrist for comfort and elegance. The thickness remains a very respectable 13mm for a watch which is 200m water resistant, which is ISO certified and thus fit for scuba diving due to screw down crown. And the crown itself is recessed into the case for durability and comfort, but does remain unguarded at 3 o'clock rather than the 430 which one sees on other Seiko models, thus giving a more casual appearance and ease of access, and making the watch more approachable in general than other Seiko divers. The brushed and polished surfaces of the case also give a sophisticated look, and do help to mirror the legibility of the dial, which has large Lumabrite applied indices. The hands also feature the Lumabrite treatment, which gives them a stronger luminescence in the dark than other alternatives at many times the price of this watch, a key selling point for this Seiko, and making legibility easier is a scratch-resistant hardlex crystal with a cyclops a magnifying area to magnify the date to, to aid legibility, which is something that's, uh, that's unlikely on a watch of this price, but still highly convenient. Naturally, the watch also has a unidirectional and luminescent diving bezel, which is topped with an aluminium insert, which, whilst not as durable as ceramic, will offer easy and inexpensive replacements if needed, which is something which you can't guarantee with ceramic inserts. Inside, the watch also uses a Seiko in-house movement, which is the 4R35, with a 42-hour power reserve, 6 ticks per second, or a beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour, with hacking and hand winding, unlike cheaper options from Seiko. Of course, this is an automatic movement which guarantees durability, while still giving the enjoyment of a mechanical watch, and service prices which are generally lower than you would expect from other higher-end Seiko movements, but also from Swiss alternatives, making it a very important choice for this watch, in terms of guaranteeing long-lasted durability and reliability. And so, therefore, whether you go for the blue, the black, or the Pepsi-coloured paddy edition of this watch, with a wave dial, you'll get a very well-engineered watch for under £350, and so a really brilliant watch to enjoy all summer, and indeed all year round, due to the affordable price of this watch, and guaranteed maintenance for many years to come. The next watch to speak about also adopts the format of a 200m water-resistant dive watch, with a screw-down crown and fully graduated aluminium-topped unidirectional dive bezel with a luminescent pip. However, the Certina DSPH200M, yes, quite a mouthful it must be said, harks back to 1967 when the same brand released a rather interesting dive watch of the same name, which offered an innovative double security system in the form of a Swiss dive watch. And by comparison to the original, the case has grown from 40mm to 42.8mm, but still retains the brushed and polished stainless steel construction, with a turtle embossed on the case back, which adorned the original. And the increased size should be, should be considered as an advantage, in the sense that it does enhance the resistance of the watch to the elements, by simply putting more steel around the movement, and as this watch will be used in the summer, and for more active activities, it's understandable that you would want this. The front of the watch also features an acrylic crystal which is true to the original, and gives the soft light on the dial which you would expect of a vintage watch, and the high domed shape which is so charismatic, but it is coated for scratch resistance, thus giving you the best of both worlds. The dial also follows the original with its effortlessly cooled 60s crosshairs and sword hands which are polished over a matte black base. It does however gain a red second hand, and doesn't take aged Luminova, which I think is a nice choice to avoid giving this watch an overly vintage look, and thus giving it a timeless appeal. 
Internally, the watch contains a 23 joule ETA Powermatic 80 automatic movement, which is of course produced by the, uh, by the Swatch Group under the ETA name. And this loses two joules by comparison to an ETA 2824, but shares the same architecture. And whilst it does lose those two joules and drop down 23 joules, and also um, does have a, uh, a lower beat rate of 6 ticks per second, it retains the hacking in hand winding, and also gains an 80 hour power reserve to the normal 38 hours you would expect to get from one of these movements. This means that you can put the watch down and leave it over the weekend, and not have to worry about winding it when you pick it up again, a real convenience if you're wearing several watches over the summer. Crucially though, this watch also includes the features which gave the original watch its DS name for double protection. Firstly, the watch has a rubber ring around the movement in order to absorb shocks and protect the movement, and secondly, it had a screwed ring to hold down the crystal. And this gives a higher water resistance, and on the original, this technology was crucial for development to protect from helium during the Sea Lab 2 project, which indelibly linked Certina to the history of diving. And so as a result, this Certina makes a really superb option if you're looking for a Swiss-made piece with subdued but historical design and a quietly robust specification for a frankly unbelievable price, which I don't think has any equals on the market at the present time. Of course, there are other options from, from other brands which offer a, a comparable package, but I think in terms of sheer value, and also in terms of the fact that it's produced by the Swatch Group, and so you have a certain security with servicing, and also in terms of the maintenance of the watch in the long term, I think this is a great choice for around that sort of price range. Now this next watch is a piece which I have a certain personal connection to, as I was an early tester of this watch in prototype form last year, and I remain an avid supporter of the products uh, designed by Sergio Dorenzo, the founder of the brand. And this watch represents a casual play on watches, with a brilliant and really unique design, absolutely stunning dial, and very well built and well chosen movement. The case of the watch is stainless steel, and measures 41mm by 48mm from lug to lug, and is a fantastic blend of sharp edges, such as the polished rim of the floating bezel, which is extremely fine and very very difficult to make when compared to other options on the market, as well as the smooth curves which are seen in the bevels along the polished sides of the case, with some brushed elements seen as well, and deeply dished case sides which you simply don't see from other brands. The water resistance of this watch is relatively minimal at 50 meters because of a simple push-pull crown and exhibition case back, although this watch should still be usable around water because it has been tested to be able to resist shallow water, so swimming with this watch in the pool shouldn't be too much of a problem. It also has a very subtly domed sapphire crystal, which I appreciate because it's, it, uh, it flows straight into the curve of the bezel, and is also given an anti-reflective coating to be able to be usable even in bright sunlight. The dial is a really magnificent part, with a sunburst effect and a fume fade from light to dark in silver, blue or green, with a range of different luminescent colours used through a sandwich dial construction, with a loomed plate sitting beneath the beautifully finished dial. A matte black option is also available, it should be noted. And the hands are given a very finely constructed um, form, and are matted on their surface with a luminescent treatment as well, which creates a very attractive look in the dark, and a very legible piece in the dark too. And importantly, the dial is printed with the absolute utmost care, and is given a bowl shape, which means there's no actual rehort on the edge of the, uh, the, the dial at all, and one sees the dial actually flow straight into the crystal itself, which is a wonderful look, and gives continuity to the form. And the piece does come with a model with the date or without the date, though if you do choose the date at 6 o'clock, it does come with a matching coloured date wheel. Powering this watch is the Solita SW200, which is a Swiss-made automatic movement with a 38-hour power reserve, and of course shock resistance too, in addition to a full Swiss build. It's also given a high beat rate of 8 ticks per second, as well as hacking and hand winding, to make this watch very practical as a, uh, an everyday timepiece. And it's a very serviceable movement too, which, which will give you quality for years to come, and whilst it's not, uh, not exactly an inexpensive movement, it's an industry standard piece which in the case of this watch really has been assembled with care. And on top of that you get a decorated rotor with Dorenzo signing with Dorenzo Genève on it, as well as Geneva striping and blued screws. And as someone who's actually bought one of these pieces for their personal connection, collection, I can certainly say that this is a, a wonderful option, and a very original option produced in a limited run of 400 pieces. And in my eyes this presents quite an interesting uh, example of a watch which takes the idea of a steel luxury watch, of course at a more affordable price than something more high-end, and creates something truly unique from it. Um, in many ways this looks like the, uh, the child of a Petit Philippe Nautilus, and a Panerai Radiomir from the 23rd century. But uh, really, whatever your, your choice is with this watch in terms of configuration, for the price it's a really fantastic piece. 
For this penultimate piece, I'd like to speak about another watch which I happen to own personally, and those who watch my channel on a regular basis will already know my support and admiration for Zodiac, a brand owned by the Fossil Group, but with a really extensive history, and also a very interesting way of approaching watchmaking. And whilst some may not be enthusiastic about their ownership by the Fossil Group, I regard this as a plus point, which is on par really with brands like Omega being owned by the Swatch Group. And the reason for this is that due to having such immense funding, Zodiac can afford to operate independently and create what they like, and not really what a committee would support, which often is a bad, uh, a bad idea when creating a watch or something creative of that sort. And this also gives rarity to their pieces, because they're able to produce some pieces which, even in non-limited edition form, ends up being produced in less than 100 pieces, even in this modern age, which is simply unheard of, because it simply wouldn't be cost-effective for most brands, but this brand is able to give real rarity as a result of their funding. And so therefore, the piece which I'd like to speak about is a model which I own myself, and I've been enjoying for a while, and it's the Super Seawolf 53, which is the sort of smaller brother, if you will, of their 1000 meter dive watch version of the Seawolf 68, which is a little bit too much for a lot of people, and I think this model is perhaps more approachable. And it has a 200 meter water resistance, and is 40 millimeters at the bezel, but only 39 millimeters at the case side to make it very wearable. The stainless steel case is given a brushed and polished finish, which is very finely grained, and whilst equivalent to the finishing on that Dorenzo, really is a very, very high quality, which you simply wouldn't expect to see at this price range. The case is also given a 120 click unidirectional bezel with a mineral crystal insert for a very vintage look to look a bit like acrylic, but of course with higher scratch resistance, and naturally the watch has a screw down crown, whilst the crystal is a beautifully box domed sapphire. Under this is a really superb dial which comes in a variety of finishes, from deep navy with orange accents or sunburst blue and red to silver, green and orangey pink on the desirable and striking watermelon version. And across all models, the finishing is a step above anything else at this price range, as the applied markers are perfectly formed, the printing is very crisp and very consistent, and hands and applied logo are sharper than watches at even five times the price, which I've seen, which I find mildly staggering. The movement inside the watch is the STP3-13, and it's a movement developed by the Fossil Group as an alternative to the ETA2824 or the Salita SW200. And it shares a similar architecture as that ETA, but it is only produced in a chronometer grade for Zodiac, and that's pretty unheard of for this price range, considering the fact that even their models which aren't chronometer certified are produced to a chronometer grade, so they will keep time consistently, and, uh, and will be able to, to offer really fantastic timekeeping. The movement is also fully decorated, and that's not to say just the rotor on this piece, despite not having an exhibition case back, and it also has a swan neck regulator for fine adjustment of the balance, which again, you just don't see at this price range on this sort of movement. Otherwise, the movement shares the same specifications as the Salita SW200, and it beats at 4 hertz and has a 40 hour power reserve. And so as a package, I think this model really presents uh, an ideal blend of, of excellent quality, broadly enjoyed looks which appeal to those who want something brighter, or something which, uh, which is a bit more subdued. And so with a wild colour palette to be enjoyed with a cocktail by the seaside, the prices start at £820, then go up if you want the metal bracelet. And so I think it really is a great choice. For the final watch in this video, I feel that it's worth addressing a watch which really gives you everything which you might want during the summer. This piece offers modern looks, bright colours, a high water resistance and crucially a GMT function, which allows you to track two time zones whilst on holiday, a real convenience. And in this video I am of course placing a real emphasis on value, and so I'm not extending too far into very high price ranges, because if you want to watch for the summer then you might not necessarily wear it all the time throughout the rest of the year and so as a result I'm sticking to lower price ranges with this video, and I do recognise that this watch does reach into a higher price bracket, but I think in terms of what you're getting for your money, it really is a very good package. And of course this is the Oris Aquis GMT Date, from the highly respected brand which was founded in 1904. And with a 300 meter water resistant 43.5mm stainless steel case, this watch delivers a build fully capable of resisting diving, as a result of using a screw down crown and despite having an exhibition case back onto the movement. With the characteristic screwed in crown guards, as well as the luminescent ceramic bezel insert, which is here engraved with a 24 hour scale for the use of that GMT function if you want to track a third time zone, this watch also resists a fair battering despite appearing very lustrous and brushed with polished finishes due to the use of ceramic with its high scratch resistance. Of course one should remember that this watch does have proprietary lugs, which won't fit normal straps, although both the, the Oris rubber strap and leather strap, as well as the steel bracelet, 
are great options and ones which will cost a great deal of money to replace with similar quality from an independent brand. And despite having a black ceramic bezel, the dial of this watch, visible through an anti-reflective domed sapphire crystal, is sunburst blue with a grained GMT ring around the inside of the dial in order to not interfere with the normal time display. The indices are beautifully applied and faceted on the dial with matching hands, all of which are loomed copiously for ease of legibility at night, but still with a very modern flair and with very appealing and unique lines. This watch really gives a, a fantastic balance, therefore, of technical strength and spectacular colour and finish to give you a feel of luxury while still giving you high technical resistance. Inside the watch beats a Salita SW330, which is a similar architecture to the ETA289 series of movements, which in fact were developed further by Omega to produce some of their early coaxial movements, just adding a bit of history to this movement. However, this movement has been upgraded somewhat by Oris, and given the customary red rotor which is seen on their watches, in addition to its 25 joules hacking and hand winding, and of course its GMT function. And the GMT function on this watch isn't a direct GMT in the sense that you can adjust the GMT hand independently from the rest of the, uh, the time, which is not something which you normally get on a, a GMT watch, and so it does mean that this GMT function is perhaps not quite so easy to use as something like a Rolex GMT Master II. However, because it's the minor aspect of the dial and is something which is going to be a secondary time zone for travelling, I don't view this as too much of an inconvenience. But all in all, I think this watch presents a superb package which whilst more expensive than other pieces in this video, still provides all that you could need for a fun but well-designed summer timepiece. And so I'll conclude the video there, but do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of this video, and also what you would choose for watches for the summer, as I've tried to include a broad range of timepieces, which place an emphasis on value, but I'll be very curious to hear what you would wear if you were going on holiday, or simply enjoying a watch around the house uh, at home during the summer. And before, we, before the end of this video, I would of course like to encourage you to like, share and subscribe to help the channel, but also to be able to see more videos and content here in the future, which may be of use as well or of interest. So thank you very much for watching. This is Arm on the Watch Guy, out.